What is up everybody? Meriden Gaming here. We're back for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Tank Showcase and Review. Today we're taking a look at the Tier 8 turreted American Tank Destroyer, the T-28 Prototype. This is one of the first ass true assault uh, TDs you get in this line. Previous one could take some shots, but it really wasn't all that armored. But this thing is effectively a heavy tank with a little bit better penetration. But anyway, as you can see here, yeah, I mean, th this this is heavy tank all day long. Nice big old turret, good angles on the armor. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the live. This is against, um, what you're going to be facing most of the time is going to be mediums and other TDs. And yeah, you need over 200 pin. Um, so a lot of the times, they're not even going to be able to go through you. Even the Capolas are not a guarantee to go through. I mean, look at that. You need 250 pin to go through these reliably. Um, and then over 200 in the front. So you can definitely get in there and brawl with a lot of those things. The one downside you have, this little gun port, but a lot of people don't think to aim there. So anyway, yeah, great for side scraping. Yeah, this thing is a beast, to say the least. Haha, uh -huh, I made it right. Anyway, let's get to the comparison. So we have the T-28, which is the other line of the Americans. This is going towards that T-95 and eventually the T-110E3 versus the E4. Then we have the SU-101 going towards the 264 version 4, which is the other assault uh, style uh, TD. Then we have the turreted ones, the Baramatal Borsig Waffentrager, um, which this thing is, it has a derp gun, but the other gun is just as good. Now all of these, except for the Udes, have access to the tier 10 gun. You can tell they're going to be pumping out a lot of damage overall. All right, and then we have the Charioteer for those people going for the FD4005. And finally, the Swedes start showing up with their TVs in the UDES 03. Now, I play on the North America server. These are the ones I see the most. Maybe different where you're at. All right, DPM, right in the middle. Not great, not bad. Uh, mainly due to a fairly fast reload compared to a lot of the other tanks with their tier 10 guns. And then damage, 400, right in the middle, other than the Ramatol, which has that derp gun, um, which we can take a look at. The normal gun it has is the 12, uh, which you can see is 490, so that's better. That's closer to the other one, and of course it does have better stats as far as penetration, other than the heat rounds, which this thing throws heat rounds a lot. Just throwing that out there. Uh, then we get down to the um, shell velocity, kind of slow, uh, not nearly as fast as some of the others, but you can definitely make it work. You do have to lead a little bit more for those moving targets, but with a 120 caliber gun, yeah, you can pin anything that's 39 uh, armor or less. So that's awesome. And 40 ammo capacity. I really don't run out of ammo with this thing. This is the one that I'm currently working on. Um, I could see if you fired every single time you could, you could probably run out of ammo, but I like to make my shots count anyway, so I don't just fling shots out there all the time. 2.01 aim time, more than uh, functional. That is what I try to get everything else down to, uh, but we can get that down a little bit more because we're gonna wanna get the dispersion down. Since you are a brawler and you can kind, you can't really hang with the heavy tanks, but you're close enough that you can, as long as you're not the first tank out there. Um, the .36 is more than enough to deal with just about anything at medium ranges. Now you can sit back and use it as a sniper to a certain extent, but you're only going to get this down to like .33. So there's that. Gun depression, 10 degrees, just like charioteer, typical American. Uh, tank in general with that 10 degrees other than the T28 and the T95 and the T123. All those have less because they are non-turreted. They're more of a traditional ED but with a lot of armor. Um, good traverse. You can't completely turn it all the way around um, but it's pretty close. So negative 143 um, both directions whereas the Ramatol and the Charioteer can make full rotation. So you basically uh, once you have this and you have the, what's the next? 
I can't think of what the next two up are. But they can literally turn like 90 degrees, I believe. Um, anyway, let's get down to speed. You're a slow, grudging TD. You're an assault TD. So what you make up, or what you lack in speed, you make up for in armor. So that's what you have to take into account here. Then you get down to our, like I said, the armor, 203. So with the angles, that gets you around 240, 250, uh, for, which is difficult for a lot of stuff to go through. With standard rounds, if they start slinging gold rounds, they will go through you, but it definitely helps. Not as much as the T28, but still very respectable armor at tier 8. Then we get down to camo. Yeah, you don't really have camo. You sit up really high in this thing. So, yeah, you might get it up to 30, but this is more designed to use those hills and whatnot and peek over the hills to shoot. You, this really does play like a medium-sized heavy tank, in my opinion. And then at view range 380, because you step a little bit higher, you do have a little bit better view range. Now, the good thing is this has a covered top. So we can put on vents. We're also going to want to have that gun rammer so we can fire at those shells faster. And then I tend to go with the improved aiming. You could technically go with a turbocharger in place of probably the aiming so you can get around better, but this is what I would suggest. We're going to go brothers in arms, camouflage, then you're going to want smooth ride, you're going to want snapshot. Intuition, trust me, want it. That's another great one to have. Then the next thing kind of comes down to how you're going to play it. You can go with concealment if you wanted to. But personally, I went with repairs. Uh, just because I play this more as a heavy tank. Um, actually, I play this more than my heavy tanks typically. Uh, but anyway, so that's, that's kind of up to you. And then, of course, eventually... You know, the, the typical clutch braking uh, to give you a little bit better traverse speed with this thing because it is kind of slow. And then situational awareness and recon. Um, but that's those are like the absolute last things you have to get. Um, and then off-road driving is also really good to have in this tank. In fact, I would probably go off-road driving before I went with concealment or repairs. Uh, let me take those back off. Because those, those are like the very last thing. So that gets us down to 8.3 reload time, pretty good. Dispersion down to 0.33, like I said, so not bad, not great, not bad. Definitely good for brawling in the media or middle areas. And then, uh, like I said, our camo not great. Um, if we did throw on the concealment, it would help a little bit. But our view range up to almost 400, that's perfectly good for spotting at the very end of the game. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we threw on the concealment. I feel like that Brothers in Arms doesn't look like it's lit up. Nope, it is. Okay. So with concealment, that gets us up to 27. That's okay. It's not great. But you're not going to be that sneaky with this thing. People are going to know you're coming. Anyway, let's get over to uh, the gameplay. Now we're going to be watching Bad AD. Uh, let me get this... And we are on Gilson, I believe. Right, yep. He's in the Canada Day, Canada Day Pink Camo. Let's get this show on the road. At the time of this recording, we're getting close to the 4th of July. Which is, uh, and then Canada Day, I believe, is July 2nd. He's going to go to the heavy area, like I said. I mean, that that's a fairly standard play of this thing. Uh, is try to go the heavy line or the the secondary heavy line. Someone's already shooting out those. And he has zoomed out far. Oh god, unlucky that. There you go. Now he's got a heavy to shoot at and a medium. Oh, a T twenty sixty four. That's basically a heavy. Now with this, you can kind of side scrape, or you can use this frontal armor to bounce stuff just like that. Hail people! 
but they just fire without even really trying to check to see where your armor is. A lot of people will try to shoot your cupolas, but that really doesn't work either. I mean, yeah, look at that. Bounce, 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 bounce. This range, they're not going to have the penetration. Oh, nice, sneaking that shot through that girder in the wall. The T26E4 has decided, you know what, maybe I don't want to sit there. I tried to fling another one out there. Didn't quite get the aim for the, the RNG for it. Always love when you see something relocated after you shot it a couple times. Like, you know what? Maybe I don't want to sit in front of this D28 prototype. Oh, he is getting flanked. But he should be more than enough to deal with the Barask. The, the problem with the Barask is going to be that it can probably. They're fast enough to where they can take cover. I have never tried to go that way. Yeah, that's not a great location for the Barask. I think the Brask already fired twice, so he should be safe to shoot. But the Brass can get around behind you if you're not careful. Also got a something coming up. Oh no, that's in the middle of the thing. Yeah. Oh, I find not the Brass gonna get away. Gonna reload time? No. Don't chase him. Nice, nice, quick shot in there. All right, so they're on an assault, or not an assault, uh, encounter. If somebody is sitting there. It's probably in that little line right between E and F. That's usually the safest spot to be. Don't peek out here, but, oh no, he's sitting in the middle of it. The tiger finally did manage to pin a shot, though. Now he's gonna side scrape maybe a little bit. And yeah, that tiger is going to be Swiss cheese. The tigers do not have great armor. They're more of a, a medium heavy or a light heavy. I guess. Cracked him, but. It the typical heavy tank player, they probably have repairs, so he'll be able to move fairly quickly. Three twenty six, low roll. You can finish that one off. They are down. Four tanks. Wow. Yeah, because of the armor, this is a good spot for this tank. Sure. Start capping. Get to this position here. This is a great position. Oh, nope, gonna keep on trucking. I'll deal with these two heavies here. Oh, 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 can he get the medium? Can he get the medium? Finished him off. Good shot there. I'm sure that means like. I moved over here to get away from him. Right through the middle. And look at that bounce from the OI that I using a nerf gun. Not gonna go through the front of this thing. The Lerva. Big old shot there. He's paying attention to the OI. Not the T28. Boom, right through the side. Low roll. And there's the finish. So far, three kills, 5,000 damage, not too bad. 1,400 blocked. Told you, this thing is an assault. And they're probably in a good position now, now that they've caught up in tanks. Try to three cap this. Now the one downside to this location is the artillery. The artillery will blind fire that, that spot there. Like that.
Now, see, I wouldn't show my rear like that in that location because of like where that XP is coming from. Try to sit here and buy him. And Carnivon, can you finish him off? Nicely done. Block that shot so it didn't lose the cap points. Alright, now there's only three left. We could tap out easily. There's the stir coming in trying to get a kill. Carnivon probably should have just stayed back and gone for the, the cap, but trying to get all the points they can. Another shot into him and two. One and finish capping. Nope, the Carnivon drove out. Yeah, now see that. AMX will have the pin to go through here. Those two kills, so only thing left is the rain. Might as well not even bother capping, just try to go find the dude. Oh, they have three heavy. Got three heavy, so it's gonna be. Oh, there's the rain. I get around here. Can he get the kill? What do y'all think? Can I get this last kill? Almost 6,500 damage. Oh, 122 M. Alright, let's go ahead and get over back to the stats of the game. Alright, so 6,400 damage, 1,700 blocked, and 3 kills. Not bad. Focusing more on just damage rather than the, the enemies were re, re, relocating uh, before you could get those kills. But yeah, this thing is a beast. I mean, look, 1700 damage blocked for a TD. Yeah. Ace Tanker, Bruiser, Duelist, Fire Perfect, Shell Proof, and High Caliber. Anyway, this is Miranda Gaming. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the little bell notification icon so you can see all my videos. If there's a specific tank you wish to see next, just leave that in the most current. Victory Tank Review video, and I'll add it to the uh, list. Typically, I record three or four in advance, so it will take a little bit before it comes out. But usually, the next week, it should be out. Anyway, this is Mary Gaming, and I'll see you on the battlefield.